Okay, welcome to Conflict Havoc number two. We're going to talk martial arts. Alright. So I want to talk martial arts for um, a certain amount of reasons. One, there's never enough people who do martial arts that tell you everything that you should probably know. And since it's two after midnight, I'm more than likely not going to go too deep into this because I have to work tomorrow. Plus, I have to finish typing or begin to retype my anti-racist paper for my government class. The thing we understand of how martial arts work is you take a form, you take a punch. You take a knee, take an elbow, take a kick. There's no room in here. But you figure it out as you go. Now, the thing about martial arts is that there are ins and outs, do's and don'ts. There are probably a lot more don'ts than do's, and a lot of us don't know that. And the reason we don't know that is because nine times out of ten, the person teaching us, uh, excuse me, either wasn't taught it themselves, or they just don't know. And it happens. You can be taught some shit that you need to know versus shit that you probably should know versus not being taught things at all. All right, when it comes down to fighting, I'm against. Uh, the black belt system. Honestly, truly to God, I'm against the black belt system because of what I've gone through and I still have to get a black belt. I want to get a black belt. I just gotta, I'm just going to pick a martial art and go get one. I mean that all heartily. I am against the black belt system for the simple fact that the system is flawed. Now, no one's going to agree with me, especially if you are a martial artist and I am okay with you not agreeing with me, but I'm going to tell the truth. How good is that black belt if you can't actually fight? You know, in most forms, you got to take um, for, to getting a black belt and a lot of karate and kung fu and other stuff in America. And I have to say this in America because I haven't been in any foreign country dojo. But in America, we are on this belt system from hell. And the thing with the belt system is, bah, brick a brick, got a black belt, get outside, get punched in the eye, fall asleep. So how good is that black belt if the average Joe who doesn't know martial arts but is pretty good with their hands very well may fuck you up? You know, how good is having a black belt is if, all right, you're a 10-year-old kid, you read too many comic books, and I'm a 50-year-old man, and I decided I want to snap your fucking neck. Now... Being that you are a 10-year-old kid and you're way smaller than me, it's probably not going to work out for you. But let's reverse the scenario. You're a 10-year-old kid with a black belt, and I'm a 50-year-old man without one, but I've been in more fights than you. You've won mad fucking tournaments, and I whistled at your mom. So now you got it all up in your head that you're a macho kung fu Joe, and you're about to get your fucking reality check cashed. So your 10 year old little ass jumps up and says, I got this little guy right here. I'm going to fuck him up because I'm a 10 year old black belt. Yep. The only thing you're going to fuck up is receiving my brown belt upside your ass. And then I'm going to beat your mom's ass for not raising you with respect. I whistled at her. I didn't give her a cat call. I didn't say, hey, baby, that's a nice ass. I just whistled. See how easily a situation can turn when Macho kicks in. Let's do another scenario. Same concept, same scenario, different age brackets. I'm still a 50-year-old man, and you're 21. You've been in a few fights. You've won a few tournaments, but you don't have enough experience to go against me. But your pride is hurt, and your black belt is shining like a diamond. You decide, because you're bigger, I'm going to fuck this little old man up. Wisdom come with age, people. And age and experience versus youth and ambition, age and experience will beat youth and ambition damn near every time. And the reason why I say damn near every time is because there's the luck factor. You can always get lucky. I don't give a damn who you are. You can always get lucky. And lucky will save you at least once or twice in your lifetime. But being skillful is more important than being lucky. It's a combo of both. It also depends on 
who you're fighting. Alright? You're fighting somebody who just doesn't stay down. You have a problem. Guess what? I'm one of those guys who don't stay down. You're going to have to kill me to keep me down. I'm one of those people. Trust me when I tell you. Ask anybody who's ever dealt with me. They'll tell you the same. Don't fuck with James. He's one of those guys you're going to have to kill to make him stay down. Now the thing with that is, you know, there are some people that they go to sleep. There are some people the more you hit us, the more we like it. Now, I'm a little old in my old age, but fighting's my thing, you know. So I'm tough as nails. You may hit me once or twice. You may piss me off. You may jazz me up. Your black belt will mean nothing to you when I'm wrapping it around your fucking neck. So the black belt system, I'm totally against this shit. Only because here's how you earn it. You have to choreograph a fight in most schools. You have to break a brick or a board. I'm not breaking my hand to get a black belt. I will ask the sensei if there's an opt-out option of that. Because if I have if I have a choice, if I had a school, this is how you get your black belt. No one's going to agree with this, but that's okay. Because I've been thrown out of many schools for suggesting this shit. If you have a black belt, let's have a three takedown rule. If I can take your black belt, your head black belt, including the sensei, down three times in five minutes or ten minutes, I get a black belt. In fact, let's not even put a time limit on there. If I can take you down three times using what you taught me and only what you taught me, not something that you didn't teach me, then I should have a black belt. There's going to be a lot of cheaters in that class. Just just saying. Yeah. So let's, let's sweeten the pot. Let's sweeten the pot. If you have a black belt and you're the teacher, and I can take you down using any technique that I know specifically versus what you taught me, then I should have a black belt. Now let me explain why I changed that scenario really, really quickly. All right? I have spired with black belts, and I have mopped the fucking floor with them, and I don't have a black belt. I have done shit that black belts have never seen before. And I don't have a black belt. I was with a kid in, in, in high school. And he was black belt. I wasn't a black belt. I know Kung Fu. Which they generally use sashes. But I'm not a high ranking sash either. I'm just a really good fighter. So the guy went to give me a judo throw. And I landed on my feet. Which fucked him up. Because no one's ever landed on their feet from a judo throw. I'm not the only one who's done this. I'm sure. But I landed on my feet. He went to throw me. Because I swung, he stepped in, elbow, and then threw me. When he threw me, I landed on my feet, slid around, and was ready to go. And he's like, nobody's done that. I said, you ain't seen nothing yet. So then I sprung off the wall, Captain America style, and threw a kick, which he ducked. But then I came back around with another kick, which he didn't duck, but he blocked it. And he's like, man, I quit. You do some shit I ain't never seen before. I said, but you have a black belt. He said, yeah, they didn't teach me that shit. I said, well, guess what? I fight in the street a lot. Sometimes the impossible wins fights. Sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on who you're fighting. So when I was in schools, I went to the interstairway. And when I ran out of money, Master Ennis, before he committed Sipuku, asked me what could I do to improve my school. He did not like my answer. Because my answer was, allow us to fight for our belt. You can put us in gear, you know. And since he was teaching Taekwondo, it's not like he didn't have the gear there. You can put us in gear. You can put us in any kind of protective gear to let us fight for our black belt. Because this is the same school where I had a 13-year-old green belt that I was doing knuckle push-ups because I refused to call him sir. And it's not that I didn't respect the kid. It's that he's 13. He's 13. I'm 16. I've been doing this a lot longer than him. The difference between him and I was, I've been fighting in the streets since I was 12 years old. That's a year younger than he doing martial arts. The difference is, I know my shit works. He's a green belt, he's 13. He thinks he's a badass. I'm 16. 
I know I'm not a badass, but I also know that the bad don't fuck with me because I'm not going down by myself. If I go down, you best believe your ass is coming with me. Hook or crook, hell or high water, I'm not dying by myself. I'm taking you with me. If we go into hell, we go into hell. If we go into war, you better believe one of us ain't getting back up. I have every intention on making sure that I'm not the one that's staying on the ground. So Mr. Ennis said, no, James, we don't fight for our belts around here. And I proceeded to tell Mr. Ennis, and I said, this is why you can't tell someone with a black belt that they're good or not good, because if they don't fight for it, they're never going to fucking know. I proceeded to go to the Seven Tigers. I proceeded to be removed from the Seven Tigers because I asked them if I could fight for my belt. The guy who ran the Seven Tigers looked at me like I was fucking stupid. And yeah, he was another white dude. And he looked at me and was like, dude, we do not fight for our belts. Same question that I asked Master Ennis, God rest his soul. I said, well, how do you know you're good if you don't fight for your belt? You need to get out of my studio right now. And this is when they moved to the new place down 29 before the International Black Belt Center came into existence. Which, when I went there to go get cast members who were black belts for a couple of movies that I wanted to do, I was immediately shoved out of their dojo. Which means the sensei had no fucking respect for other martial artists, and whoever's letting their kids go to that bastard probably need to refresh the purity of martial arts, because the thing about martial arts is that you honor and respect other martial artists, regardless of whether you like their style or not, you still show them honor, you know, you still give them a chance to talk to you versus get the fuck out of my dojo, which is exactly what he said. You need to get the fuck out of my dojo. I said, dude, I'm trying to make a kung fu movie. I need people who actually have martial art experience. I don't need somebody that if I throw a round kick and they don't know how to block, I catch them in the face. I'm not trying to hurt people. I want people who actually know what the fuck they're doing so that if we're making a movie and I go for a knee and they can block it, I don't have to worry about them getting hurt and we can keep filming. Versus if I throw a knee and they don't know how to block it, but because my dumb ass know that they have a black belt, they should know how to block a knee. You know, you got a couple of blocks here, here. You got all kinds of blocks. But if they don't know how to block knee and I level their shit, now production has to stop because motherfucker was sleeping. Motherfucker might be hurt. Motherfucker might not want to fucking make the movie no more. Which means we got to go back to the drawing board. So, you know, you don't want to fight with someone who has not been properly trained. But if a person has been properly trained in the martial arts, then I don't have to worry about them when we're making a fight scene. Enough said. But how do you know you're good at martial arts if you don't fight for your fucking belt? Which, again, every sensei that I've been to in Charlottesville has told me we don't fight for our belts. I went to Richmond. I went to Dong's. I love Dong's. Dong told me I was too hardcore and I should respectfully leave his dojo. Which I did. And I went home. I came back to Charlottesville. Ain't think no more of it. You know, I was like, alright, I'm just going to put it out there. If anybody knows martial arts, let's make a movie. If you don't know martial arts, let's not. I.E. Fallen Dragons came to be. That was my very first movie. I have it over there somewhere. I'm going to have to find that damn thing and, and record it and play it and switch it off or whatever. Now, the thing about martial arts. You can have all the black belts in the world and can't fight your way out of a wet paper bag. Well, this is where MMA and other martial arts differ. Because in MMA, you know, you're mixing all the martial arts versus if you're stuck with traditional Kung Fu, Wing Chun, Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, Kenpo, Aikido. When you're stuck in those things, you know, you don't tend to blend. I'm a strong believer in blend everything. Because here, here, here's, here's where we go wrong. Uh, excuse me. Here's where we go wrong when it comes to martial arts. We think that because size, strength, toughness, which are the smallest parts of fighting, like literally the smallest parts of fighting, count for something. Yeah, you're stronger than me, so if you hit me with everything you got, it's a good chance you're going to put me to sleep. The trick to that is, as I said, 
you actually have to hit me. Which will only work if my ass is still there when you throw the punch or the kick. If my ass forgets to block when you throw the kick or the punch, then I may go to sleep. Or the opposite may happen. I may have an adrenaline surge and just commits to beat the living shit out of you. It could happen. Trust me, I've done this. But, you know, it, it, it can definitely happen. It can work in both ways in a fight. A fight is not guaranteed a victor until the fight has come to a stop. That's when you know there's been a victory. So there's winners, losers, and a draw. And if you're in a street fight, it's going to fight until it stops. If you're in a competition, it's going to fight until the judge and them stop it, which means TKO, KO, or draw, which will be declared by the ref in the ring. I understand how this works in the controlled environment versus in the streets. In the streets, it's win, lose, or draw, buddy. And if you're lucky, you're going to win one. If you're not lucky, you're going to sleep. And it also depends on who the hell you're fighting. If you're fighting somebody who's never fought before and they lose, then they lose. If you find somebody who's never fought before and they pull a rabbit out their ass and they win, then they've won. Doesn't get any different than that. Now, if you're both fighting each other and a freak accident happens and you both, boom, and you both knock each other the fuck out, that's a draw. And somebody will wake both of y'all up and either y'all will continue to fight or y'all both will realize, I've had enough. Happens. Hasn't happened to me, but... It happens. I've watched some shit go down once or twice in my life, too. So, the belt system. First belt, yellow belt. Excuse me. Your first earned belt is a yellow belt. Your very first belt is a white belt. And if you get 7th degree white, you get like a little yellow strip or a little green strip. It depends on what school you go to. For Taekwondo, for Mr. Ennis, to get a 7th degree white belt before I could get a 1st degree yellow belt was a load of shit. But that's how it was. And I had to do Tosan or Tungu. When he switched in the heart, I had to do Tungu. So let me explain how this works. I had to do all these damn kata shits to earn a belt. And I said to myself in my head, when the fuck am I going to get the chance to do that in the streets? And this is the thing. I will say this until the day I die. I did not take martial arts to get a belt. I took martial arts so I could become more dangerous than the guy across the fight can feel for me. Because that way, when the punches are thrown, I know what to do. I didn't take martial arts to become a champion. I took martial arts to survive. And that's the difference maker. When you fight to survive, it's a whole different ball game than when you fight for a victory. Alright? So fighting for a belt would come natural to me because I fought all the time. Everybody in my school that I went to in the inner stairway were mostly white people. Except for like one black guy who was a black belt. He tested for his black belt. He was a red belt when I met him. He became a black belt and he did katas. I don't recall if he broke bricks or anything because I was there the day he tested for his belt. And it was cool and everything and he kind of felt the same way I felt that you should be able to fight for your belt. But he didn't go with me on that when I spoke to Mr. Ennis because he wasn't there. And even if he was there, he probably wouldn't have went with me on it anyway. And, you know, he's a little older gentleman, so he probably wouldn't have agreed with me because violence doesn't serve anything. Which is true. Violence does not solve everything. However, it will solve a few problems. And I didn't say you had to be brutal when you fight for your belt. I did mention earlier in this video that you could have put us in equipment. Now, the equipment slows you down by 15%. Unless you've been training in the equipment, like weighted clothes and shit like that, then that's a different ballgame. But Mr. Ennis was highly against that shit, so that kind of did that in. But everywhere else I went was highly against fighting for your black belts. And I'm sitting there like, dudes, do you not understand the concept of being able to defend yourself? If I can break a board, that doesn't mean I can beat somebody's ass when I bump into them in the street. And if they see me break down into a crane, they'll be like, oh, this motherfucker knows karate. I like people who think they know karate. Because you can know karate. You can know kung fu. But that does not mean you know how to fight. That's the one thing that I want to end this video on. Just because you know a martial art doesn't mean you know how to use it effectively. Just because you know a martial art doesn't mean that you can beat the guy across the, the fucking road who doesn't know martial art. Doesn't mean shit. Because... Here's how training in a dojo works.
Okay? That's how training in the dojo works. Of course, dance. See how I totally fucked that up? So, block, block, strike, strike, block, strike, 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 block, 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 block. All right, you get the gist. Nine times out of ten, when you're fighting, it's not going to be moving that slow. Most street fights only last between two to five minutes. If you're lucky, it's two minutes and you don't get knocked the fuck out. You knock out the other guy. If you're unlucky, it's two to five minutes and sooner or later you get knocked the fuck out. Or you fall down. Or a table hit you. Anyway, that being said, you have to understand that martial arts and fighting work on two different principles. The thing about fighting, which is the difference maker between fighting and martial arts, the thing about it is really simple. If we're fighting, I'm going to hit you until I can't. In your mind, you're thinking the same thing. So that's factor one. My size being smaller, your size being bigger, that's factor two, but it really don't mean shit to me because everybody's bigger than me. The bigger you are, the harder I get to hit you. Factor number three, your skill level versus my skill level. Factor number four, what if neither one of us really can fight and we're just going through the motions and praying that someone nails something that works. And number six, what if we actually both know how to fight and how to block and how to defend, how to deflect, how to evade? We're going to have a good time. You know, straight up, we're going to have a good time. But the problem is, when is one of us going to be able to break the other one's defenses and do the job that's needed to do? You don't know when it's going to happen. Neither do I. Therefore, if you fight for your belt, you will at least know did you have some skill versus not fighting for your belt and Hanukin, you broke a rock. Hanukin, you broke a board. But now you gotta go meet Joe. Joe Blow from across the block. He's been talking about your mama and her tampons. And you didn't take that shit very kindly. So you're gonna walk up to Joe and say, hey Joe. I'm going to fuck you up. And Joe looks at you and he goes, <laughs> Hit me with your best shot, little man. And he hit Joe. And then Joe hits you back. And you go to sleep. Because you have a black belt, but you didn't fight for your black belt to see exactly what your skill level actually is. Stay tuned for part two.